بيتكلف بيها؟ بالظبط كتير اهو Can we stop? Want to come with us? Now your French is better, so we can speak French. So today I'd like to, because I asked you to do something, you know, I think, I don't know if you have prepared something, because to summarize this epics, yeah? Epics. Uh, I just ask you to focus on uh, whatever the uh, event you know you, you you think that you are interested in in the epics, Iliad or Odyssey or anything, or any any hero or any god, so that we can a little bit uh, go in depth and then see uh, uh, to what extent you know uh, these kind of epics are relevant for today. So what kind of uh, evolution, and then uh, mm, I don't know I think, uh, if they are uh, relevant for us, pertinent or, pertinent or not. <laughs> That's the thing. So I think we have discussed a lot of things about that, you know? Uh, so just to summarize, just to make sure that, you know, okay, we have uh, uh, understood yeah, those uh, epics, and uh, also, uh, Understanding is uh, very important, and then also uh, just uh, so just questioning, you know, reflecting on that, you know. So do you think that, uh, like, for instance, we can say the same thing for Mahabharata? Mahabharata, many people think that you know they are relevant, yeah. And uh, in my opinion, yes, they are relevant. Maybe all the Mahabharata, uh, but you know, I think we can use them for today. So this is the, uh, uh, the what I want you to discuss today, you see. And then I will go for the, what I call the convergence. Yeah. Can we do convergence also? Convergence. Do you know what is convergence? Yeah. Convergence means you, are, you have uh, two parallel, like this. And then, uh, yeah. So we have uh, the Western culture and the, Indian culture, for instance, no, or epics, or whatever, you know, so they are parallel, you know, so, so they don't discuss. Okay, even they respect you. They said, "Oh, yeah, this is good, it's good, it is," but it's not my thing. No, it it, it it might not help me at all. Okay, so parallel convergence means you know we just look at both and then see, you know, in this context, <coughs> today times, <coughs> sorry, today times. Is it possible to uh, bring from both, you know, or multiple, maybe, multiple? Is it possible to bring different things, different dimensions, different ideas, different opinions, different experiences that could uh, help all the world? So if you put together, you know, the, for instance, the Indian civilization and the Western, I mean, to summarize, yeah, when I'm saying the Indian civilization, so I will explain why, because, you know, we have Chinese civilization also, very important, yeah? We have the Russian civil Slav, Slav, very important, yeah? We have the African also, yeah? We have the Middle East also, the, all these countries. Why I think that, you know, uh, in my opinion, Indian civilization might uh, synthesize a little bit all civilization in the world. I, I think, yeah, we, I mean, I will explain this later. And, uh, and the West, Fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know, the West has dominated during different centuries and it's still dominating through at least the economical level, the style of life dominating, dominating. So we have to look at it. But you know, you can see as I, I think I discussed this yesterday, so even in the West, in the West, there are plenty of people who disagree what's happening, you know. So they want to find, I, I have given you the example. Do you remember this, uh, this, uh, this Edgar, Edgar Morin? Edgar Morin is one of them, he's not the only one. Edgar Morin is one of the uh, people who say that, you know, 
the Western civilization uh, brought a huge progress in the world and to the world, to the planet. But now it's becoming uh, an obstacle for all people, including people in the West, to grow and to continue innovating, etc. So some stagnation is there, you know? And you can, you can see the stagnation through different dimensions. Because even the, the, you know, the economical level, you know, the economic level itself, which is, which is one of the strengths of the West today, yeah? Strength, yeah? The economic. Economy, they are the best, yeah? But, you know, they used to be the best, but now <laughs> they are not the best, you know? So even in this kind of level, the economic level, and, you know, and people today, they are not just uh, homo economicus. You, you know this, uh, this expression? Homo economic. No, they are not. They're saying, no, no, we are not uh, homo economicus. We are homo. We are a human. <laughs> so if you say homo economicus, it is one of the dimensions of the human being. It's not the whole human being. And the Indian civilization, we consider the human as a whole. You know, human being is not split in different dimensions, and one dimension is uh, is dominating. No, it's not like that. So human dimension, the human being is made of different dimensions, and these dimensions are integrated, integrated. You know, and there is no contradiction between the cultural level, the economic level, social level. All this should be put together. So this is the. Uh, the the issue and also the challenge in this discussion. So let's go back to this uh, uh, epopee epics. You know, so you can just select uh, either event, one event from uh, from the uh, the uh, the Trojan War, ten years. You know, or you can take uh, one event or any kind of experience during the the coming back of uh, Ulysses. You know, the uh, the Odyssey. You know. We have the Iliad and then Odyssey, you know, which is the same, almost the same. You know? The Iliad is the war, and then we have also the war against Moscow to come back to. So you either you take one, one event, one experience from these uh, two different uh, uh, epics, Iliad and Odyssey, we discussed in our discussion. Or you can take a, a hero or a god among uh, the gods, among the heroes. You can take one and then focus and say, why this God, uh, the different kind of experience he, he faced, different challenges he faced, how he overcome these different you know, uh, challenges, how this experience might be helpful, might be useful for today. So this is thing we can start with. You know? you know, can take any God or God, goddess or God, you know? God or God, you know? in the Greek uh, civilization, uh, like in Indian civilization. There is no difference between men and women, you know? you know? We have God and we have goddess, yeah? yeah. Yes? We have the Olympian uh, God and goddess, and we have also, you know, heroes. And also, if you take uh, Pinipol, is a uh, Pini, uh, Pini, Pin, Pinipol? Pinilop? Pinipol, why Pinipol? Pinilop? Pinilop is a, is a hero, you know? Heroine. Pini, uh, Aphrodite also, Aphrodite, Afro Aphrodite, Aphrodite, Aphrodite. So you should learn French, you know. Right? Mm -hmm. Aphrodite, Dionysus, uh, uh, Dionysus Gio is a hero. Athena is a hero. Athena is a hero. So this is why Athena gave the name to Athens, to the city, to be called Athens. Athens, yeah, the capital of uh, Greece today. Athens. Yeah, for instance, uh, yeah. <coughs> Hero and God. Yeah, the difference, uh, yeah, we, we, we assume that, we assume, yeah, that hero uh, is, uh, uh, is a super uh, man, super, uh, super huh? he, he is not God because, <coughs> yeah. 
Yeah, Prometheus or even the Dionysus. Yeah, Dionysus is both a hero and uh, and uh, and god. Yeah, but he did he he joined you know the Olymp later, you know later because he was not accepted. You know, he was not accepted because he he uh, he, he looks he looks more than uh, looks more human than a god. Facing the challenges, but also uh, overcoming challenges. Ah, overcoming challenges. Yeah. So uh, gods, uh, gods, <laughs> we said, gods have uh, some talents human cannot have. Yeah. Talent, you know. So and uh, as a human, we cannot manage the gods' talent, you know, because you know we depend on the gods. You know, human depend on gods, but. Uh, Vice versa, no. It's not vice versa. You know? I mean, uh, gods, they don't, because they have some talents, them, uh, uh, outstanding talents, they can uh, face any kind of challenge and uh, they can uh, bring some help, you know. They can help human. They can help human. Human cannot help God, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, you know, in some civilization, uh, even uh, Christianity, you say that uh, God created the man uh, in, the, in the same image, you know, yeah, God, you know. You know, uh, Dieu a créé, a créé l'homme à son image. Dieu a créé, God created the human uh, to his image, to his image, to his image. So this is also we can uh, we can discuss, but uh, we can interpret this. Uh, you know, some kind of uh, Indian civilization is there also, yeah, because you know you can see at uh, Atma, uh, at Atman Brahman, you know. Uh, no, but what I mean, but uh, because you know, Brahman is to be the God. You know, Brahma is the God. You know, the God. But yeah, but you know what I mean, Atman, Atman, the soul, the soul. I'm talking about the soul. Yeah, I am. Uh, let me say this. Uh, uh, Yeah, but uh, in both, you know, you have, uh, you know, in a human being, you know. Yeah. Ah, yeah, it's true. No, I mean, because in the in the in this kind of philosophy, we we don't divide, you know. Yeah, we don't divide. So uh, in in the human, you can find some God also. God is there because it's embedded in the human. It's embedded in the human. So the Atman might uh, also be considered as a, a part of Brahman. You know, Brahman. You know, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a. Yeah. No, that's true. That's true. Yeah, because it's spread in all the. Yeah. No, but the human being. No, because you, the the concept of human. Yeah, I mean, of being. You know, in so you can, a tree is a being. You know, animal is being. So all them is, yeah. Some 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 Brahman Brahman is embedded in all these kind of beings. You know, that's true. You know, that's true. Yeah. yeah. No, because here you are using the uh, the concept of uh, reincarnation, of uh, re la reincarnation. Ah, reincarnation. Ah, reincarnation. Reincarnation means no. You can, uh, you know, anyone can be. I mean, this is the Indian, also the, the Buddhist philosophy. You know, I don't know. Maybe the Buddhists can uh, can explain this. You know, for instance, you know, uh, uh, Lama is the you know, uh, Dalai Lama. So uh, you can find this reincarnation everywhere. Reincarnation is there, and then you have to search. You know who is uh, eligible for <laughs> the Lama. You know, 
it can be real, it can not be in a different way. So this we will uh, we can discuss here. The Indian philosophy is real. But uh, what I what I said that you know uh, the difference between the Indian civilization and the Western civilization is that in the West, unfortunately, I would say, this is why I think it's interesting to look at the, this epics, you know, because the West today, this is what uh, everyone is recognizing and claiming, claiming. The West, uh, we, we, uh, we are, we belong to the Greek-Roman civilization, okay? We, be, we belong to the Greek-Roman civilization, okay? And the, the Christianity is a, is a part of that, yeah? Because, you know, during the Roman, uh, Roman uh, era, you know, Christianity and, uh, and uh, the empire, the, the king, yeah? so they, they, together, you know, they, they merged, exactly, they merged. So, uh, so if, if it, the, it's really the case, so we, the West today, if you look at the epics, you know, we, we discussed a little bit the epics, yeah? Human is very complex, you know. So, between gods, hero, and man, and, uh, and human being, you know, some kind of relations, and it's, uh, you know, uh, different kinds of dimensions are there. Complexity is there. Complexity is there. Complexity. Values, different values, you know. You can see the uh, Penelope and the Eugis, and then uh, the honor concept, the values, you know, the dignity, uh, jealousy, values, and passion. Very important, isn't it? Very important, but uh, in the West, uh, I think today, especially after the uh, the Renaissance uh, and the French Revolution and the Industrial Revolution, only some kind of dimension remained in the West from that you know. So yes, we belong to the Greek and the Roman civilization, but unfortunately, we removed a lot of dimensions. Which are very important in the in the Greek and the Roman civilization. We remove them. I mean, remove maybe not. Uh, I mean, consciously, but uh, because the development was such, based on the the reason, rationality, uh, yeah, the economical purpose became very very important. So slowly, all the values were a little bit removed, you know. And then because those values belonging to the Greek and the Roman were not supposed to be uh, helpful for the new model of developments, the Western. So this is what I'm also saying that today the West, yes, belong to the thing, but not entirely belong to it. Because uh, the West has some kind of values uh, which are no more important for what's happening in the societies, in the European society or America or something like that. So that's it. So we talk about the Greek philosophy, as I told you, we talk about the Greek philosophy, the Roman philosophy, but we don't practice much those, those values, etc. So that's the thing. So this is why I think that this convergence can happen. Can happen. Because we are not asking the, 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 the West to, uh, I mean, to merge with another civilization. No. First, you have to go back to your own civilization. That's the problem. Because there was a there was a, what do you call it, rupture. The rupture means rupture, you know. There was a rupture, you know. So this is why I think, you know, today many people are aware of that, but they don't know how, how to go back to my roots and to, I mean, uh, uh, to, uh, to get back all the values which used to belong to their things. So it's very difficult because the, the economical model is so powerful that it will not allow easily to take from the past and to say, no, these values are very important. You have to use them today. So, but you know, I mean, it's not impossible. And I'm saying it's not impossible because in the West, you might, if you dig a little bit, you might find some values which look like the Indian values. Because, yeah, the Indian values. But, the, I mean, it doesn't mean that you are import, importing for another civilization, no. You are going back to your own values. But because in the Indian civilization, those values have not completely been removed. You know? They are still alive, even if, uh, you know, also domination of the West is there. 
but still in the Indian civilization, because we have not, we have not uh, uh, separated the different dimensions of human beings. And like the, what happened in the West after the uh, Renaissance, the revolution. So this is the, the thing because tomorrow we will see. Because I believe that uh, this kind of uh, convergence can happen. Can happen. You know, you know, intellectually, many people think that you know we have to find something like Edgar Morin. Edgar Morin said, you know, it's time to change civilization. But you know, what does it mean? Why do you want to change your civilization? And what is the civilization we think you think that, that it would be uh, much more uh, interesting, much more uh, effective? I don't know. So uh, this this kind of question. So, okay, for me, it's uh, you know, it's not going to another civilization, but you know, going back to your own civilization. And if you go to your own values, you will find this similarities, similarities. So the Indian civilization will not be perceived as a shocking civilization for us. And you will find that you know, we are not that impermeable. Impermeable means no, nothing might can, you know, you know the, the meaning of impermeable? Impermeable, is, is it, no. impermeable means impermeable, exactly. exactly. So this is the, uh, <laughs> the thinking, the general thinking of, so tomorrow we will discuss you now how, how this convergence might happen and why, I mean, now then, the diagnosis, the, I think many people, many people agree, many people agree that uh, the West, something is needed, some kind of a, uh, important uh, transformation is needed because, you know, people are not very happy. You, know? <laughs> you can find today in the different, you know, uh, different, you know, the TV channels today, you know, in search of, in search of happiness, in search of happiness. What does it mean? It means that they are not enough happy. So it's strange because normally they are very happy, you know, because they have reached very high level of development, you know. But today, you know, this uh, kind of uh, this kind of search is widely shared by people. They are searching for the happiness. So first, you know, why you think you are you you need you need you know to search the happiness because you are not happy. So why you are not happy? And then many people are going, you know, like the, um, you know, in the Indology, Indology, you know, many uh, people from uh, different countries, I mean, even from uh, Latin America, they came to India, to, to Asia, etc., and, and they, uh, they go for some kind of uh, meditation to learn, you know, spirituality, spirituality. Yoga, yoga. Just you can take the example of someone who is really known, Max Müller. Yeah? But in, in France, you have uh, Alain Danielou. Danielou, for instance, is very known. He became, uh, he became uh, Hindu. And he's Christian. He's Catholic. He became Hindu. And, and Danielou. So, uh, and uh, we have now today in France, one guy, his uh, name is uh, uh, Mathieu, Mathieu Ricard. Mathieu Ricard. Very popular. He's selling plenty of books. Mathieu Ricard, R R I C A R D. You can find Mathieu Ricard is selling many books. You know, I think he's writing maybe two, three books a year about you know uh, Buddhism, about Hinduism, etc. So, and the, why people need to go to that? You know, it means no. There is a need to to search for because he, they will find some uh, some kind of happiness in in, in those practices. In those practices, uh, uh, either uh, you know intellectually, intellectually or uh, practically, you can find you know in the Buddhism, in the Hinduism, uh, some uh, some responses uh, to your uh, your questions, to your questions, and it can it can maybe it can help you maybe reach some kind of uh, happiness, maybe not the total happiness, but still. So this is very popular. French, French. Yeah, you find it in Nepal. I don't know. Maybe he's a. Yeah. He is a stereotype. Yeah, he became Buddhist. He became Buddhist. Mathieu Ricard. He, he, he is very popular in France. Very popular. But, you know, but he's struggling. He said, you know, I don't understand. But it's very difficult to, I mean, uh, to, to put into practice uh, 
some kind of, uh, you know, th those experiences coming from this, uh, this exotic world, you know, this uh, oriental, orientalism, etc. And uh, it's difficult. Maybe because the approach is not, my approach is different. Because the, um, Edgar Mira, same thing, you know, all the time he's, when he, I think he's still alive, I don't know if he, if he died or not, Edgar Morin, Edgar, Edgar Morin. And, uh, you know, he's struggling, you know, all the time, you know, I think he died, you know, he was 100th uh, century. I don't know if he died, maybe he's still alive, I don't know. Edgar Morin, you know. Uh, at, uh, I attended one, uh, one lecture, and he, he was, uh, 99, 99, can you imagine this? 99, in his age, was struggling, said, no, what are you waiting, we should, because the, the chaos is coming, you know, we, we are at risk today. <laughs> he was a little bit upset about his, uh, his, uh, his friends, you know. said, no, 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 we have to move to different things. But he, uh, he didn't become a, he didn't become a Buddhist or Hindu or something like that, but, but uh, he has this awareness, you know. He has this awareness that you know we need, uh, we need to. He he is pro trying to promote what we call the the dialogue of civilization, you know. So he is go he, he goes beyond this what we call the dialogue of religions because many people they are, I mean, meeting you know, uh, once upon a time I said you know, every two years or three years, uh, uh, especially the uh, the three religious the three Abra Abraham. Abraham religion, you know, all the time they meet, they, it's about dialogue of religions, <laughs> dialogue of religions. But he said, no, no, dialogue of religion is not enough. We have to go to dialogue of civilization. So why three, three religions? No, you cannot. Uh, huh? Still alive, so he is more than 100. Oh, <laughs> long life, <laughs> long life, long life to him, long life to him, long life to him. Very Amazing. He is. He used to be uh, he, one of the most uh, recognized expert in complexity. Complexity. And complexity. As I told you, the West is no more complex because for the West, everything should be simple. You know. Even if, for instance, one problem is complex, your purpose is first to simplify the problem. Simplifying means dividing. Div you divide. A problem in different parts and then you focus on one part not on all so this is what we call the the logical way of solving problems using the rationality rationality because you know if you you are dealing with all the different parts of the same problem so you are facing co complexity you will not able to face that so this is why you have to simplify and to divide and to focus but the problem is that, you know, Edgar Moore, as he, used, he used to say that, you know, if you divide the problem, yeah, you can do it, you know, in terms of methodology of work, you can do it. But still, I think you will lose the complexity. And if you lose the complexity, then you cannot solve the problem as a whole. You will solve one part of the problem, but not all the problem. It's, this is the complexity. Complexity means different parts are integrated. So if you divide, you will lose this integration. This, uh, this uh, very powerful. Thing. But you know, in the in the Western model, you know, these uh, people are afraid of this kind of complexity. So they said first, you know, let's uh, simplify and make it simple, make it simple. So using because this is the, what we call the Cartesianism, huh? Car segmentation, exactly. Cartesianism, Cartesian. Uh, even if you if you read, you know, if you read uh, uh, Descartes, if you read Descartes, yes, he has this famous. Uh, uh, I think, uh, I think, therefore I am. You know, yes. Uh, je pense donc je suis. Je pense donc je suis. I think, therefore I am. So people retained only that. But if you read, he 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 wrote also a book about. Uh, not meditation, but uh, metaphysics. Metaphysics, you know, because he is a sci scientist. But he wrote a book about uh, metaphysics, and you know, people didn't understand my message. <laughs> but all the West, you know, has become, you know, Cartesianism. Cartesianism, this is the logic, you know, you have to rational, you have to be rational. Otherwise, you, if you are irrational, 
No. So you are going back to the old day, you know, middle age or <laughs> no. the darkness or something like that, you know. The light is the, is the simple and the logic and the rational. rational. We should not go back to the thing, the old age. And we can, you know, we got rid of the old age, you know, it's not there. And this uh, rationality, no, rational uh, was very useful because the development, the, at least the economic development, was based on the rationality. Industrial revolution. Industrial revolution. If you look at the, in the management, uh, this, uh, uh, what is his name? It's American Taylor. Taylor. Taylor, you know? Taylor in the management, no? So he introduced the science in the organization, in the way of managing organization. So this is what he was supposed to do. He said, you know, all the organization, no, this was in the, in the ninth, in the 20th century. Uh, nine, uh, 19, 20, 25, uh, 30, or something like that, you know? So he looked at the organization and he said, no, no they, this organization are very archaic and they are not effective enough. So the purpose is to increase the efficiency and increase the effectiveness. But how? Look, this, this is agriculture. This is, uh, you know, very, very chaos. So we have to be scientific in managing the organization. And he started introducing, I think you know, I mean, maybe some of you know this uh, Taylorism, how he did, you know, introducing the science within the organization means dividing the work. So people, because, you no know, people, when they are working, so they take the work and then they do everything, everything, you know. The whole thing is done by one person. So, no, 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 no. So, you are a worker, okay. So, I am dividing your work in different parts. So, I am sitting. I, different parts. So your job is not to do all the job, to do only the parts I am giving to you. Ass I am assigning you one thing. And this, you know, the job you are doing, you know, you, you are assigned, you know, this part, the job, is measures, measurements. He introduced the measurements. So in the different case, the objective with this is to measure what you are doing and in how much time. So this is how the productivity start increasing, etc. But the men, the uh, uh, workers, uh, were no more considered as a worker. They were considered as a, as a tool to do some specific thing. Because the men have been di divided. Now, not considered as a man, entire man, but that this is how, why uh, Karl Marx himself, Karl Marx, he said that the uh, parcelization of work, segmentation of work, because uh, people uh, are no more considered as uh, as uh, human being, but as tools to get some uh, some uh, parts of a job done, let's say. And this is measured by the machines, so you cannot do whatever you want to do. So you have to comply with the instruction given by the managers. Managers. The role of managers is to control, measure, control, and punish, or you will punish them. Carrot, carrot, and the stick, and the stick. So this is how they. So all these kind of things are linked to this, uh, the what we call the the Western civilization, modern civilization. But today I think it has come to some end. You know, this is why people are looking for something, something which is something which uh, helps them be happier, happier. Okay, can you? I ask you to do. I ask uh, before you. Can can you choose some? Did you choose something? You, know? you don't understand. You can look at me. You know, I am not very. I am not the monster. I am not a cyclop. Huh? I am not a cyclop. <laughs> Did you choose something? No. I, ah. Did you find some god goddess? You have to find them. I ask you to find one one god or goddess or one, one hero or one event in these two at least uh, these two uh, epics, and then uh, uh, if you for instance you choose the Zeus or something like that, take Zeus for instance, and uh, what are the strengths, the weaknesses, the, what did he do, what do you, do you think that you know is interesting in what he was doing and uh, uh, questioning or something like that, the, or you can take any kind, uh, you take any hero for instance. Uh, 
you can take uh, a goddess uh, like Athena or something like that. So, what is this Athena? What did she? What did she do? Uh, was it interesting? What are the strengths of Athena? What are the weaknesses of Athena? What What could we learn from Athena? What she? Huh? What What could we learn? Because she was supposed to be the goddess of uh, of war and uh, and the wisdom and uh, Athena. Huh? Ah, yeah, yeah, exactly. Ah, this is, yeah, yeah. She, she is very linked to the rational way of, uh, you know, and for her, death is completely irrational. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, uh, just to, to, to summarize, you know, what we have discussed, and to synthesize and to take, you know, what are the values uh, at, the, at those times, the values, different values, and uh, do you think that those values and those practices also, some of the practices, are or could be relevant for uh, what we are looking for today? Because we are all the time searching for the best practices, no? So, uh, can we learn from, because it's very important, no? Because you know, Indian civilization is very good, very, very big, etc. But, you know, what can we learn from that, that help us, you know, improve what we are doing, that's the thing. Because, you know, you know, we, we have nothing, because many, many people from the West, what we call the, sank, uh, sank, the Sanskrit, Sanskritist people, you know, from the West, you know, from, from the, the West, you know, including Latin America, many people. I don't have in mind the, the names of the people coming from, like, from Brazil, from Argentina. They, they want to, uh, to India and uh, to different places. And uh, the West, you know, Schopenhauer and uh, Mac Mac Miller and many people. So, and they have learned the Sanskrit, you know, learned. They, they become experts in Sanskrit. If you go today to Berlin Museum, you will find the Sanskrit more than in Delhi. Hmm? Definitely. If you go to Paris also, even Paris. In Paris, we have one uh, uh, bibliothèque, uh, uh, bibliothèque library. Hmm? In Sanskrit, a lot of books. In Sanskrit. But Berlin, Max Miller uh, Institute in Berlin, a huge institute. He himself and many other scholars from Germany, they translated many, many things, Upanishad, Gita, Mahabharata, from the Sanskrit itself to the German language. So this is one thing, and then the Ind what we call the Indianism, in Indology, Indology. So plenty of experience has been, you know, uh, some people they want, like we have one uh, French also, uh, Henri Michaud, Henri Michaud. He wrote a book called uh, uh, Henri Michaud. Michaud is M-I? Exactly. 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 But he... But he was very interesting, you know. He was not, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, just uh, fascinated by the where, by the by the East, by the exotism, etc. No, no, no. Michaud wrote a book called, you know, uh, "Un Barbar, Un Barbar en Asie, a Barbarian in Asia." Yeah, he traveled in uh, India, but also he went to China, he went to Sri Lanka, he went to different places. And then at the end, you know, he wrote the book, you know, I said he was surprised, he said, you know, who is barbarian? The West from the East? He said, I am from the West. You know, I am just, you know, discovering that, you know, we as the West, we are barbarian, not to speak. Because, you know, he, uh, he went in depth, you know. He was not just like many Orientals, they were just observing, you know, the appearances and all that. He went in depth and, you know, meeting people, etc., understanding the whole thing. And he found that, you know, these people are civilized because for the West, the East, like Africa, the Arab world, etc., they are barbarians because they are living in the old ages and then also very irrational. So if you are uh, perceived as irrational, you are like barbarian, like animals. You know, you have not uh, reached that development which can, you know, exactly. So that's the thing. But this way in the show, he found that, you know, and then he wrote this view, you know, very provocative. He said, you know, a bar barbarian in Asia, a barbar on Asia, as in, I am barbar, no? a barbar on Asia. <laughs> so, very interesting, I think. So, this kind of uh, thinking.
kind of extend your economy. Yes. So we should do. We should dig a little bit. We should do. Because most of the time we are at the surface. You know, we don't know exactly in depth civilization. We know it's all that at the surface. Only the surface. Yeah. So okay, tell me, tell me your uh, what. You, what what do you? Jewish and Mindelas. Who? We? Ah, the brother of Al Ghanan, no. Mindelas. I'm writing this in French. Eh? Mindelas. Yeah. So, what did you take from that? The dream? Yeah. It can influence also the, uh, huh? it can influence your uh, own uh, destiny. Yeah. destiny. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, be, it, be, it depends on the, the the nature of the relation you might have with this. Uh, no. This Dream, yeah? Yeah. So if you, uh, I mean, if you trust that, then you can, uh, maybe you can follow a little bit or something like that. But if you don't trust, then so. yes. because I'm not sure that it will be good or, or bad. So because you know, it's, uh, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, there is a fear, but also, uh, you know, this uh, you said, oracle, the oracle.
Yeah, be yeah because I think, uh, you know, uh, otherwise your responsibility will, uh, will, uh, will not be, uh, I mean, uh, you, you will not really uh, be responsible because you said, you know, uh, this, is, this has come from God or something like that. So I'm sure that I will win, you understand? But uh, what is my responsibility? No, it's not a personal responsibility. I have to follow that. No, because if I believe also, if I trust and I believe, okay. Other, otherwise, you know, if you, for instance, you go uh, to war and just told you that you will win, but he didn't tell you that you will win. Yeah? It, it, I mean, he told you that you will have something good or something like that. Yeah? Uh, but then, uh, then uh, your responsibility as a person will vanish. It means that's the thing. No. I mean, because even before I, you are going to war, then you said, you know, I have not come to war because, you know, but because I had the dream and then they have <laughs> that and that. <laughs> I am sure that I will, I will win because this is interpretation. Also. Yeah. interpretation. He will interpret that, that the dream will be interpreted positively, you know? Yeah, that's it. Coming from Zeus, obviously, yeah? Coming from Zeus. Because, you know, Zeus, you know, everyone, you know, Trust Zeus, you know. Who doesn't trust Zeus? Everyone, no? Because he's the, the god of gods, you know. That's it. Yeah, yeah super thing. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. But, you know, the extension to the American is interesting. <laughs> Again. Crop, yeah, politician. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Mm. So he, he was hiding his identity. Mm. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 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 Oh, for that this is very interesting because you know this uh, I am I don't know uh, this is very very Ulysses. Ulysses? He didn't want. He didn't want to uh, uh, to reveal himself. You know. But why? Why? Because he felt the danger. I should not reveal myself. But also, it's much more profound. I don't. I don't know. Means I don't know. I don't know. Who? I don't know who I am. It, it, I mean, it, it might be interpreted like that, you know? Because in, in this, you know, after, you know, after the crossing, the, all the adventures, all the things, so he is lost. He felt that. <laughs> so this is, kind of, uh, this is my interpretation of the I mean, doesn't mean, but, you know, after, you know, because 10 years war and then 10 years, he's, he's still struggling to go back to home. He didn't understand who am I am. <laughs> Am I the hero? Am I the, really the hero? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So to some extent, he's questioning himself. Who I am? Okay, I am Elis, but you know, but what is this Elis? I mean, a hero, something or nothing. I'm nothing, you know. So I'm not able to face all the the different you know, adventures I'm I'm you know facing today. So this could be also no. I don't know. I mean, so I have to dig a little bit to understand, you know. So my own personality, what uh, do I want to do? What should I do, etc. So that's the thing. But you know, as you said, you know, also because fear is there, yeah? Fear, because he's afraid. So he, he, didn't, he didn't want to reveal himself. So I said, pre -pre it's preferable for me, you know, to hide myself. But you don't know if you hide yourself, but you know, if Cyclops wants to eat you, they eat you, you know, whatever your identity is. <laughs> Ah, yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> so 
I don't understand why all the, his company were eaten by the cyclops and he was, uh, he survived. Why he survived? Okay, because of the trade. But what is the, what is the, what is the, I mean, uh, uh, the importance for this, the, this uh, cyclops of, of being known or not known? You know? Okay, no problem. Okay. So, any other example? Yes, tell me. On a, do you have some example? Ex other example? You have some. Did you, did you have some example, you know, from that, uh, those, uh, those uh, different uh, gods or heroes or uh, goddess or uh, different kinds of events, you know? The different kinds of events happened in, during this uh, 10 years plus 10 years. There are plenty of events happened, you know. Uh, do you have one, uh, if you think that it's important for you, for you, in your, in your own perception, what, what could be the event or the, the hero which is interesting for you? And you can say that, you know, oh, this, uh, this hero, he's behaving, his different uh, practices, etc. Yeah, interesting first, and then second, uh, it could be it could be relevant for today. That's the question. Oktar, yeah, Oktar. It he's a tro throwing the throwing. Uh, Thor is a very good example. Yes. Yeah. And and for that, I mean, he is the hero for the Troy, yeah, but still, I think uh, uh, in the apex, he is not the most, uh, I mean, uh, visible, uh, visible, uh, you know. So uh, Hector was killed by Achille, uh, yeah. but you know Achille, uh, Achille uh, I, I think you know uh, some time back you know. So Hector uh, I think hardly also killed you know Achille. Achille uh, I think uh, he was in uh, in uh, big danger yeah. no, because yeah. because yeah the, uh, and Hector was very really powerful also, very powerful, yeah, yeah? He, uh, very powerful. So he could have killed you know Achille. Yeah, but he killed, almost killed him. This is. Example? Any example? Ah, uh, Hera. So Hera, how? Uh, So Hera was born uh, from the uh, yeah. Zeus, yeah. Yeah, she was the wife of Zeus. Yeah. yeah. And she was uh, playing a very interesting game. Yeah. How can you how can you resist Zeus? That's the problem. Big mistake. Yeah. 
Dropadi. No? Drop? No. Durudana, yeah. Ah, ah, Almost the same, yeah. Almost the same. Almost the same. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, between India and there. Any other example? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she she's helpful, helpful to us. She was not supposed to do, yeah. But true. she was doing it. So from that end, she came to this conclusion that she was actually making a devotee. So she is such type of body who always speaks to the devotee and always helps the devotee in some every aspect. And mm. the way in which she survived this uh, all the challenges, I think so without having a direct or indirect help, she was not possible. Uh, mm. That was the... Promethe also, I think he... Uh, Promethe. I think he... No, Promethe. No, Promethe was helped by uh, Athena also. Yeah, because, uh, yeah. Yeah? yeah, he was, he, she, he, Promethe, he, he, he was in, in hell, you know, because he was punished. He received a very huge punishment from Zeus. And Athena was not happy with that. But, you know, uh, she could find how to help, you know, uh, different, uh, in different ways because she could not, I mean, oppose, you know, the, yeah, but still. I, I mentioned yeah. Uh, this is why she, uh, yeah, because. Except Krishna may be interfering. But Krishna, <laughs> if Krishna is a human, we have a body in the. Yeah, this. Uh, mm, 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 yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, but generally, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, this is this is this is why Athena was uh, was not really the, the goddess of uh, of war. She was not uh, because there was I think who is was uh, Ma no not Mars yes yeah and uh, wisdom the wisdom she was really the symbol of wisdom and uh, you know wisdom this is the wisdom you know this is the wisdom if you are wise you know you, you should be, you should get closer to people and help them. Yes? So even if some people are doing some uh, uh, harm or some uh, they are um, making mistakes or like that, so you get closer to them, try to understand. So that's compassion is there. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, Before that, but it was not now. No. Because because in India when a god becomes prominent, it becomes the philosophy of that place, you know, that time. Something like that, you see? The concept of being yeah, you, a you, philosophy is not really Yeah, you can say that uh, Athena itself Athen, Athen, the capital of Greek. Yeah. So this is one of the reasons they named that, you know, is you know, it's Athena. Yeah. Because, because the philosophy the philosophy, because uh, you know the Greek philosopher, you know, obviously very known, yeah. So uh, philosophy as a as a in, uh, discipline or area or knowledge, something like that. Uh, the, the main thing in philo philosophy, I mean, at, le at least in the Greek concept, is wisdom. And uh, phil philosophy is not it's not just rhetoric, it means uh, thinking and developing things about you know uh, happiness, about you know about the city, about the citizens, about this kind of thing. But it's also some practice, practice. So if you practice, then you, you, you become wise, you become wise. So the philosophy in the perspective of Greek is wisdom. And wisdom, what is wisdom? Wisdom means, you know, first you have to practice what you are talking about. Yeah? And then you have to get closer to people. If you are not closer to people, so you cannot understand what are these uh, their expectations? Uh, you and you have you cannot help them. Can you help someone who don't know what are his expectations? No, you cannot. So this is it makes sense. Maybe this is uh, I mean this is one of the link you know between uh, between uh, Athena and uh, I think some uh, legacy is there.
this is one of the big things uh, because you know the relationships, different similarities between rationality and wisdom. Now this this is one one of the things I think the West lost. You know, today the 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 Western model uh, gave much more importance to this. And to some extent, they have forgotten this. Now, they are trying to go back to this, to find again some wisdom. Huh. Today, today, so today they are trying to, and they are trying, they are searching that, in other they are going, a brute, they are going to other civilization. So this is why this uh, Indology, the Orientalism, this Orientalist, this, uh, Sanskritist people, uh, uh, Western philosophers, they go to uh, different places in China, they went to different places in, the East, uh, in Asia because uh, they believe, rightly, that the wisdom is there, not here. <laughs> because we lost it. Because we have developed, you know, in three centuries, you know, three centuries, you know, uh, development, you know, the society, the, economic differences using only this rationality. And uh, and that's the problem. What, and Athena was good. And the, and the, and the West the West cannot accept the contradiction. No. No, contra they are not very uh, they are they are not comfortable dealing with complexity and contradictions. So what I am talking about is contradictory because you are saying this and this. So it cannot go together. So they, they are not very really comfortable in that. And they think that it's not the right way to behave and to, to manage, to solve problems, etc. So you have to focus on the rationality. If you are not rational, you cannot be civilized. You know? So this is the thing. The Chinese, Indians, they are not civilized. Why? Yeah, because Plenty of irrationality in their way of thinking, their way of behaving, their way of doing things. So, so this thing. So. Yeah. 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 This is what I, I don't know. It's very difficult. But still, I think, uh, I think because of the, you are facing some challenges, you know. So if you are, cri even crisis, some crisis, you know. So uh, you have to find, you know, first, why we are facing this crisis, where this crisis uh, uh, come, you know. You have to analyze. Because this is the rational way. Analyzing, you know. Before solving a problem, you have to analyze the problem. <laughs> In the life, and then, then how? What are the different uh, solutions? Solutions, you know. Uh, so, wisdom can help, but you know how you can get the wisdom. So this is why, for instance, you look at uh, in management, you know, leadership, these kind of things, you know, leadership. So today, it's really unbelievable. Today, most of the books in management talking about leadership, they are. Compulsory, they are talking about you know spiritual leadership, you know um, meditation, you know leadership, uh, wisdom leadership, uh, this kind of you know you can open any book today. Leadership is focusing on that. It's focusing on. But as you said, yes, this is the intellectual part of things. You know what I mean? You are getting some intellectually, you are getting some wisdom, you know, some wisdom. But when you have to put it into practice. Then we face some obstacles, constraints. Because, you know, as a leader, even if you are a decision maker, you know, you want to practice some, you know, and then put some wisdom in what you are practicing and doing. But then, uh, you know, then you have some regulations, some rules. 
the system that we have in is a system we discussed. The system and the institutional is still so powerful that uh, if you want to practice this kind of wisdom, so you have to convince the system itself that uh, this can, exactly, this could be, could bring, you know, more, hap more hap not only more happiness because, because prosperity, but also effectiveness in this kind of thing. If you are not to bring some evidence for that, so no one will listen to you. You know, I said, okay, wisdom, it's good, it's uh, interesting, I can, uh, yeah, I can listen, I can understand what you are talking about, wisdom. I am also trying to be wise, etc. But uh, in terms of performance, in terms of effectiveness, what uh, all this wisdom will bring? You know, it should impact what we are doing, and it, it should help us improve what we are doing. And among the improvements, you know, what should we improve? Performance. So that's a problem. Again, per performance, yes, we agree. But performance, we have different kinds of, per per I mean, we have different kinds of perspectives. You can have a performance at the short run, at the mid range, and then at the long run. This is another obstacle also. So some people are trying to face that. So some people that focusing on the short run, say, next year I'd like to have some results, outcome. What are the outcomes? No, you can explain the same thing with education. If you are sending people for education, education. So uh, next year for you find a job. And then people are expecting you know, that you know, oh, this guy is very educated. Huh? Okay? So he should, uh, he should uh, help us improve immediately. No, it will not come immediately because this is education, you know. So educated people uh, coming from IITs or from IEM, so it will take some time. I think, um, I don't know, six months, one year, maybe two years, depending what kind of assignment they have, you know. Yeah. But unfortunately, in many cases, this uh, short run objective has become very powerful. So some people are understanding that you have to look at the long run, means at least two, three years or something like that. But then if, for instance, no, after one year, you are not uh, very successful, okay, said, so, okay, this is the first year, we understand that we cannot get everything in one year. So let's, okay, second year. Second year, you are not getting much improvement. Then people are a little bit worried about that. So people are not very patient. Not very patient. Why? Because the pe other people are, uh, are, are waiting for the, the, the outcomes, you know. They are, yeah, they are just, you know, the, expecting you provide some kind of uh, you know, otherwise uh, so you have I mean what I mean that you can do it definitely you can but you you, you should you should uh, you should have a, a huge wisdom and a huge patience and a, a huge very strong capacity of negotiation and convincing people that we are in the Right trend. So that's, uh, that's good. But definitely, I think, you must, you know, if you look at, uh, I, I said yesterday, in, in, in the US, in the US, many business schools in the US have introduced Sufism. I was, I was in uh, a few years back, yeah? few, I was really, you know, uh, really, you know I, I was not expecting that. I went to the US, I used to go very often to the US for business schools. And one day I was in uh, California, some university there, and then uh, there was one, uh, one track, I saw the thing, you know, because I was just looking, you know, which track is interesting, etc. One track, you know, Sufism and Rumi, <laughs> Rumi, say Rumi, Rumi in business management, in business management. I was very shocked, said, and then I said, I get, uh, I went there in the first day, and then I discussed with people who organize that kind of thing, I said, you know, so what is this, you know, you, you think that you know, they discuss that, you know, how can this Sufism and Rumi help us in the business? <laughs> and uh, I discussed with some uh, one uh, guy was organizing that. He told me that uh, at that time, you know, so almost uh, 35 or 40 business schools have already introduced program in that kind of things. So at least. 
So this is what we are discussing. So he told me that, you know, no, I said, you know, do you think that you can practice because Rumi, you know, <laughs> will do like a spiritual do something. Today, there is one, there is, today, there is one uh, very, very known international, uh, you know, association, American, Academy of Management, AOM, very known, very, very. So every year, you know, I don't know, thousands of people, you know, from, from the world, they go attend the, the annual conference there. And this uh, AOM, this association, American Association, they have done, they, they have introduced one department on religion, spirituality, and management. It's uh, focusing only on that. All the papers, you know, should be written in that area. And then they are discussing, you know, how to put it into practice. Then this is what happened. So they said, at least, you know, intellectually, People should understand those kind of because you know people are completely close to that thing, you know, impermeable, you know. So if you at least you know they start to you know understanding, knowing, having some kind of knowledge, some curiosity, curiosity, you say, oh, Rumi, first Rumi, who is Rumi? No one knows as Rumi, Rumi, huh? Who is the Sufism? No one knows. So at least no. Now you start knowing, you know. Oh. And then, depending on you, uh, do you think that you know you can find some helpful, useful thing for you or not? And then you have to, uh, if you work together with people who are advanced in this kind of knowledge, who can help you put it into practice? Then this is the way. This is the way, you know. Because you know, if for instance you are expert in uh, spirituality and you go to any organization, then no, okay, let's uh, put into practice spirituality. So then we can. We can improve on what we are doing. No, no one will listen. But you know, no, okay, give us some, some evidence. I mean, you cannot work alone. You know, and you cannot. And I'm, you, not only you cannot, but no, you, you should not. You should not impose this kind of things to other people. So this is a, this is why you have to. You know, even in a, even in a appropriate context, like the you know. Can you say that in, in India, 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 no? uh, theoretically, yes, in India, not only you can talk about spirituality, but you can discuss with some managers that, uh, I mean, should be enough open to accept that. Do you think that you know, all Indian organizations will accept that? No. 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 No, because uh, India has become really complex. You know, some people are open, others uh, not open. So, for instance, especially organization, Indian organization dealing with international things, working with American, European, they don't care about this kind of things. No, no. Yeah, that's it. But no, because they said, you know, okay, you, we are working with people who are interested only in dollars. Why do you want me to? Because I'm working with them. So, and also I am. I am contributing to the economic, uh, the Indian economy. Eh? So it's not through spirituality, and it cannot, it cannot come through spirituality. <laughs> we have to use some, uh, some technical things, some rational things. All of them coming from US. US. Textbooks are US or UK, something like that. So that's really difficult. Really. But it's uh, it's changing, you know. In France recently. I have contributed to uh, yeah, three books. They asked me because they think that I am good. In <laughs> I have different perspectives. So we have written a book, uh, a book about uh, Buddhism, how Buddhism leadership through Buddhism. So and uh, just uh, last week there was one uh, big conference in Paris about that. So, so at least this is uh, this is one step, one step. It, because I, I can tell you, but you know, 20 years back, it's not, it was not possible at all to talk about that. I mean, there was absolutely no people interested in that. But now, I think, you know, more than 200 people, I mean, high level, you know, they are interested, they are working on that. So that's a good step, no? isn't it? I, obviously, you know, if you are impatient, you will not, you will, you know, because it will maybe, it might, it might take some time. It might take time, yeah, because, you know, yeah? Convincing people is really difficult. Yes, ma'am. 
A few things I just uh, giving you the there is one scholar uh, uh, he is still uh, he's in uh, MIT today his name is uh, Otto Otto Scharner uh, there is a C here Scharner no origin German origin somewhere there he wrote a book a few years back I I was I was a member of this thing but then I unfortunately I could not uh, follow this. So he wrote a book, Otto Scharner, he's in MIT, he's professor in MIT. He wrote a book, uh, he titled the book, uh, The Theory, Theory, You. So I really, uh, I was in India a few years back, you know, I, I was uh, interacting with him and then I, 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 bec I became a member of that thing. Give me a few figures, you can see, Theory, You. You. Why do you, you? Because you know, I mean, you are not familiar with uh, management, but in management we have the theory, uh, 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 theory, uh, uh, theory uh, x, theory x, x, theory x, theory y. <laughs> so this is a Taylorism, Taylorism, this uh, scientific management, you know. Why? You can say that there are some, uh, some kind of uh, uh, positive, uh, positive improvement, uh, improvement, you know, because X is uh, really Taylorism. So people, people are just tools, just tools. Huh? I am not interested in uh, your, uh, your, uh, huh? no, I am interested only in your Technical competencies. What can you do in this specific, very simple task? Okay? You don't have to think because I don't need your thinking. <laughs> you know? And also, I don't, you, I don't want you to, to claim this and that because I am not a, I'm not a social association. If you have any problem or something like that, you can go to the unions or go to the welfare or something like that. I am not welfare. I am here for getting some results done, some task done. This is theory X, so don't have to. Then, some improvement. In America, this is America, some improvement. But some, some people discovered that these people, these people who are embedded in this uh, X, in this scientific management, they are not performant enough. So why? Uh, normally, the scientific scientific management should uh, should uh, bring them, uh, you know, in that kind of uh, context, you know, of performance. So they discovered that uh, these people who are working, you know, in the plant or uh, in the organization, they also think, and they also feel. And they also need some kind of a team spirit because they're all the time discussing, you know, no, even if they're not in the job itself, but outside they discuss and then they think about what they have been doing and then what do they think about their management, their organization. So they think, very surprising, you know, they should not think, but they are thinking. So they have developed this theory. Why? So it means, you know, if you want people to be effective, you have to consider them also as a human being. <laughs> That's very strange, no? And then they have introduced some kind of human dimensions. Team spirit, let them discuss, let them uh, together find some solutions. No, no. Uh, uh, consider their feelings, their emotions, emotions. Then, you know, 
I think I don't know if you have heard of this, but this emotional, emotional intelligence. You know, the guy who wrote the book, yeah, yeah I think what is his name? I forgot his name. Uh, yeah, emotional intelligence uh, has become very, very powerful all over the world. I think in India, everywhere. You know. So people have discovered this, uh, that they have discovered that people, work, workers, they also have some emotions, and those emotions could be also uh, useful for the management and for the organization. You know, that's uh, book, uh, Coleman, Coleman, I think. Uh, his name is Coleman, he wrote this book. C-O-L-E-M-A-N, uh, something like that. So this is the uh, intelligence. And then we had the, the Z theory. Z theory. Oh, this is Japanese. This is Japanese. Then we discovered the Japanese culture, the Japanese, I mean, not the culture, because we were not interested in the culture of Japan. No. Or still India, Japanese theory. No. Because Japanese organization, Japanese organization became very powerful, very effective, and they, be, they became a very dangerous competitor for Americans and also for the West. Take the example of Carmichael, Toyota. I remember I was in the US in the 80s or 85 or something like that. So um, Toyota slowly, no, slowly uh, got more and more market share in the US market, you know, in the US market. And then the, uh, the position of uh, General, General Motors, General Motors, you know General Motors? General Motors, GM, was the most powerful no, car maker in the world. So he was losing, you know, slowly, you know, his importance, no, because the Japanese. And I remember uh, some uh, advertising at that time in the US saying that to all Americans, Americans, you are buying more and more Japanese cars. And then with the thing like that, a banner like this, one Toyota bought equal thousand American workers lost. <laughs> they use this nationalism, you know. I mean, it's to convince people that, you know, they should not buy. So, you know, uh, you know, this kind of uh, advertising, you know, not only was not helpful, but you no know, more people uh, buying more and more Toyota. Because the jet, and then after that, after that, the Americans started understanding, oh, what's happening? What this uh, Japanese are doing, which would be, could be better than us? They started trying to understand, you know, the Japanese way of running the organization. This is what I think, you know. And then Americans started uh, traveling. You know, and then I'm not talking about the story. But this is this reminds me 20, 20 years back when I was doing quality management. Quality management was discovered by Japanese. Japanese. So even if the Japanese were, were trained by the Americans, so the Japanese became much more important and powerful. Is meditation, not meditation. But this meditation is not helping us. <laughs> so, so this is a, so this is, this was developed, you know, theory Z. This is a, uh, means all the West uh, started using the Japanese model, and they call this one Jap one Japanese American Japanese. He developed this theory. He called this theory theory Z, Japanese. So with the teamwork, you know quality management, this kind of things, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and uh, this guy, Sharma, he, <laughs> now we are he, hearing you. He really, very interesting, he included some spirituality in the business. Yeah. He included some spirituality, I mean, spirit, I would say, light spirituality. Light spirit, they said, mind, mindfulness, mindfulness. Because one guru from Vietnam, uh, what is his name? Very powerful, no? because you know, I met him twice or three times. Why? No, because he is in our place in France. He died two years back, maybe two years back or something like that. 
He is in Toulouse. He has an ashram in Toulouse, in France. A huge ashram. Uh, plum, plum tree. Plum tree. Plum tree. So, very good. It, no, he is absolutely. No. But, you know, for the West, I think, uh, okay. He did a good mind thing because he is very spiritual. He's not. Uh, he's not superficial. You know. He's not, he's not superficial at all. You know. Yeah, this, uh, not. Uh, not him. Not him. Take. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, for the West, he developed this uh, mindfulness. Mindfulness has become still today very, very powerful. I mean, powerful. Used everywhere. So any question, other questions? Then I, I'd like to show you a few things about, you know, because I have something that, do you have an example? Okay. Oh, yeah, the anger of Aki, very famous, yeah. Protocol. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, true, yeah, yeah, yes, true, yeah. So, uh, compassion and uh, anger. Yeah. He was angry against uh, with uh, this. Uh, yeah. And Agamemnon also. <laughs> first anger, first anger, yeah. And also, yeah, that, that's true, that's true. Yeah. So this uh, means in this direction of patience, patience, very important, not patience, passion, 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 passion. very important, isn't it? Most of them, even uh, Zeus, you know, very passionate, <laughs> passionate, you know. You should not be guided by uh, passions. Yeah, true. Yeah. And this is another link with Indian civilization. The Kama. 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 If you, if you let yourself uh, uh, guided by the Kama, then you are lost. Yeah. And the Kama, we have ten, uh, ten different emotions. Ten or, or maybe nine. 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 Yeah, that's... Uh, so they can see the link between uh, between. Yeah. 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 Any other thing? I have not listened to you. No. Uh, vo the voice of siren, the siren singing, the siren singing, the siren singing. <laughs> so you have to close your fingers. <laughs> Yeah, you are right, because, you know, we don't know how much time it took, you know, because they said, you know, this uh, Troyes, you know, the, uh, the Troyan war, 
the last uh, 10 years, but we don't know, maybe more than 10, 10 years, you know, but if you look at the evolution uh, the time, you know, no? how, how many, maybe 1,000 years or something like that, 1,000 years? Yeah, it's a, it took a long time, it took a long time. And this is very important because at that time, uh, the long run was extremely important because people, they were not interested in the short run. I mean, it was not natural to say, oh, tomorrow, or last year. No, no, no. It will take time. <laughs> so, so, and we have to work with, I mean, you have to, you have to work to make it happen, you know. But, you know, how much time? Because they believe, they, they believe in the long run. Because they are living in the long run. They are living in the long run, not in the short run. So, because of the gods, but because of the hero. The hero, you know. Ten years plus ten years is twenty years. <laughs> Can we can we show some? What's time? Can we? Do you want to have five minutes or maybe I don't know. We can because I'd like to show you a few things. No, some uh, I can I can show you. Yeah, some synthesis, some synthesis of the ethics. Yeah, and then uh, can we show this? No. Ah, sorry, yes. Yeah, can you... Uh So this is just uh, to, just to, I think you are familiar maybe with this, yeah? Just to, okay, we have focused on the Greek uh, ethics, yeah? But uh, there are many, you know, this, uh, for instance, this uh, Gilgamesh, I don't know, are you familiar with this Gilgamesh? So that's uh, very, very interesting, in search of the immortality, you know? So that's, uh, you know, you know, still today, you know, in search, people are searching for the immortality. Fortunately, it will never happen, I think. <laughs> but some people are trying to find it, yeah, how, to, how to live more, because they are interested in that. You know. So, I don't know, but you know, what is your opinion of this? Because people are obsessed by age. How to, not how to remove, welcome, not how to remove that. You know, I don't want to die. But at least how to postpone it. Postpone it, postpone it. Because it's an ugly thing. And you know, and you know, if you look at the different uh, people, you know, scholars, you know, uh, some uh, heroes in the, in the past, you know, who had contributed to the uh, well being of people. Many of them, I'm thinking of Vivekananda, but not only. Uh, they uh, they lived uh, 40 years, 40 years, and the contri immense contribution. I have an example. I'm very because I like this. Uh, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, Rinke, Rinke, this author, huge guy. You know what he did in the uh, same thing, same age, 35. He died <laughs> of 40. And many people are like, I'm not saying that people senior and not you know, I'm senior, no. But they are, oh, yes. But still, they were not obsessed by age. They were obsessed what could do, what could we do to contribute. And it can happen in 20 years, can in 15 years. Or something. I was also think, I was impressed by one uh, uh, Pakistanis, uh, Manula. Mul, uh, what is her name? This uh, Mariala. Mariala, this teenager, you know, she got the Nobel Prize, you know. 14 years she got the Nobel Prize. Can you imagine that? Contribution to uh, to uh, CSR and to human being of people. 14 years old, amazing. And some people they died, you know, 70, 80, 90. They do nothing, you know. So this is not the age is not a problem. That the, the content, what you are doing in two years, three years, four years, something like that. So I mean, I don't know if it's gifted, it's a gift or something like that. But still, I think. But 
today, unfortunately, people are much more focusing on this, uh, you know, this uh, immortality. Uh, even uh, in science, you know, in medical, you know, medical science, some people are trying to find, you know, how to live, you know, up to 200 years or 300 years. <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, but obviously, if you want to live, you know, 200 years, then you should not uh, get sick. You should not. Uh, you should not uh, become old. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a big one. That's a Yeah, but uh, yeah, but that's uh, that's true. But because I think uh, people, I mean, I mean, but still, I think. No, but I think if you if you live, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, if you are. Uh, if you live more than, uh, I don't know, 100 years or something like that, you know? Okay, you should be in good health, you know? Huh? Otherwise, but still, I think uh, today, in most of the societies, if you are 50, 55, you, you are old. So at least seniority, as you said, uh, vital, uh, uh, vitality, is not considered really, you know, uh, I mean, in the society. Obviously, for your own person, well being, yes, okay. It might help you because you know, if you are you know, 100 years and you are in a good health and you can uh, you know, do things, you know, but it's very personal. But I mean, the link with the, I mean, at least in the West, the senior seniority is not really considered as uh, added value, added value, <laughs> you know, it's added value. So very few, you know, very few countries in the West, they are maintaining people. People, uh, uh, you know, uh, people up to uh, 60, 65, something like that, you are, uh, no, it's, it's whatever your vitality. Yeah, yeah. No, but in that case, I think you are talking, you know, what you are talking about, it's, uh, I mean, you are dividing the human being in, uh, in, uh, in uh, external uh, or in a body with the aesthetic, which is, I'm not under, undermining that, I mean, no. But I think uh, uh, we are dividing human beings, you know, because we have the uh, inner side and the uh, outside, you know, the, the appearance. You know, so if you are focusing too much on the aesthetic, on the appearance, this is one dimension of human being. It's not the total. So it means that you are a little bit, you know, forgetting the inner sight. So both should go together. This I agree. But you know, if you are focusing only on the appearance, so you have to take care, oh, which is important. I, I agree that it's important, you know, taking care of the appearance, your body, the aesthetic, this is important this, because this is what is valued and maybe, and, and maybe also it, it has some impact on the health itself, maybe, maybe, but the inner side should not be uh, left behind. And unfortunately, this is what, what happened in the West also, dividing human being, we are much more focusing on the appearance. And the appearance, no, oh, you are very beautiful, you are aesthetic, and uh, yeah, to some extent uh, in good health, but good health, how can you measure good health? You have to go and ask the doctor to check different things, <laughs> otherwise I don't know about your health. Yeah, you seem in good health, but um, I don't know, you know? But you know, if you are also considering the inner side, then I think it will be much more, uh, uh, I think, uh, so 
this is this is why you have to be careful about it. You have to be careful about it. Because otherwise we are succumbing to the weaknesses which, which happened in the still happening in the West. And happening everywhere also, unfortunately, because uh, that uh, it has become some kind of you can see this, uh, I don't know what do you think of this, but uh, Talking about the doubt, the doubt, no, doubt. So, so the, not only English, but many people are doubting about the gods, no. So, but, you know, in this ethics, because the gods are doing things, you know, <laughs> because normally you cannot see what they do. But still, even today we discuss this. So, uh, the gods are supposed to be uh, not only neutral, objective, but also uh, gods. Want only good and positive things, you know. They don't. They don't want to harm people. You understand? So if you can, you see that you know diseases and the wars and conflict and the, and the crimes and this kind of things. Then I mean, this is human to question. Why are the gods? What is God? What is he God? What is he doing? This kind of things, I think, uh, Ulysses was trying to, to to understand. You know, this is, so if this is there, so he should have avoided this kind of adventure. Ten years war, you know, I have killed everyone. Uh, I have also lost all my companions, you know, my friends, etc. And I'm not able to go back home. Uh, so my wife, I don't know what she and the, my son, etc. So what are the gods? So this kind of doubt, I think, uh, I don't know what you think. What do you think? But I think. Uh, Interesting to, and if you are doubting, uh, then, uh, then 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 you you will get also the consequences of doubt doubting, you know. So you doubt then. So this is yeah. But Eunice, I think, uh, I don't know. Do you think that he he was really a devotee? He, he believed? No, I don't know. No. What do you think, Eunice? No. Practical. No. He, he was a secular. <laughs> yeah? Secular, yeah? Yeah. But still, I think, uh, I think that uh, what is interesting in Ulysses, okay? He was doubting, yeah? But at the same time, at the same time, he was, uh, he was really believing, you know, in, in God and this thing, you know? He, he, you know, he, he, he said himself that you know, uh, all the time when he uh, he had to face something, he was he was praying God. He wasn't even if this prayer. This is interesting, yeah. But this prayer is inner, inner, inner prayer. Inner, oh God, help me. He all the time he's doing that, you know. He was praying. So you can see this contradiction. Is it a contradiction or is it human being like that? Doubting, I doubt. Because I don't think that uh, gods are there, they, they are helpful, they are helpful. But still, when I'm facing some challenges, etc., I pray. So why, why I should not pray, no? I should not pray, no? If I am rational, if I am rational, I am rational, you know? I will not pray. Because I don't, I don't believe that God will help me. So that's... And this is, I think, there is one beautiful mantra in uh, in uh, Upanishad. I think very known. Yeah, asatu ma sadgamaya, tamasu ma jyoti namaya, mrityur ma amartam gana. This is it. We are in search because you know, when Ulysses is uh, is doubting, because he is uh, he is really demanding, he is really demanding, and. Unconsciously, he knows that you know he cannot do things without the help of God. So that's the thing, the beauty of the Lord. And today, the same thing is happening. You can see, for instance, the Christianity. People are supposed to be Christian Catholics, like for instance, Italy, France, and uh, Spain, something like that. Spain, very Catholic people, you know. But if you go Sunday to the church, no one is there. 
I mean, I'm talking about Europe and also Latin America, maybe more. And India, places that you can find a lot of people. But you know, if you go to European countries, you go Sunday to the church, cathedral church, beautiful places, no one is there. Very few people, very old people, they used to go to the church and the cathedral. So what does it mean? Does it mean that you know there is no, there is no, no Christian at all? In See, this is the practice. They don't practice, but they don't practice because they have become secular. They have become secular because we divided men and also we divided the society. We have the religion and we have the politics. Two different things. And we should not confuse these two things. Understand? So this is what happened. So we were not able, we are not, still we are not able to integrate. Integrate. Because, and today it's very difficult to integrate religion with the, with the human, with the society, with the politics, with the different kind of things. Very, it has become very difficult and people think that, you know, if you are integrating again these kind of things, at least in the West, you are facing a lot of problems. Because the religions today are not the, the religions in the, in the past, known in the past. Not the same religion. No, maybe this religion is the same, but but you know, people who are practicing the religion are not the same. Are not the same because interpretation. You know, this is the transformation. Transformation. Everything is being transformed. So if you are transforming your behavior, your relation with God, with the religion, also will change. Are you aware of that? Or not aware of that? No, that's something else. So this is why I think uh, people today, they are questioning the kind of relation people have with their own religion. Are they really religious? Okay, they don't practice. So if you don't practice a religion, do you think that you are religious? I don't know. Uh, then... Uh, if you believe you at least you you should uh, you should uh, have some kind of uh, you know that uh, some behavior which is linked to that kind of things this is very complex very complex so these are the things i wanted to can just we are, uh, uh, what do you think of this strengths and weaknesses of Ulysses. what do you think of this i want to have your opinion of this because so i just uh, uh, put some of the yeah because i was really The hand of God, not mine. I have not touched anything. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, what do you think of this word? Can you tell me your opinion? Can you look? Strength. So, I put this in strength and this in weakness. But I'm not sure. I'm doubting also. <laughs> I'm doubting. Passion under control. To some extent. Human values to some extent. I mean, to, to some extent. Yes? We can discuss why to some extent. But loyalty to his wife, country, roots. We can say that yes. Yeah? So, is it a strength? I don't know. What is your opinion? This is your opinion. So, he is very loyal. This is why he spent 10 years with the only one intention to reach home. This is, this is very, very powerful, yeah? 10 years. And he had plenty of temptations. Plenty of temptations. Not only having a very beautiful wife, but also also become uh, becoming uh, very powerful in different uh, islands, different uh, places. He uh, yeah, he could because you know when he was invited, and then he was fighting in this kind of thing. This king, I don't remember the name of this king. Alcinous, Alcinous, no? Alcinous. He told him not only you will marry my 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 daughter. But also you will, you will become a prince in the kingdom. 
because he was uh, when, when he was fighting, you know, he was really he was fighting like a hero because he was a hero. Yeah? So, uh, but 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 he didn't succumb to the temptations, temptations of power and temptations of love. Any girl can, uh, at that time, uh, fall in love with him. But he resisted them. So this is why uh, we can say that it's stress. We can say that it's stress. So, and then, oh, this is, for me, it's, uh, I, I told you yesterday, yeah? I'm very, very, uh, really, you know, I, uh, fascinated by this. The, the tears of Eurys. So I, just, I added a few things here. What is it? Because you remember, you know, he was crying, you know. You remember, he, he tied himself, you know, in this uh, mass of the, yeah, the, yeah, the mass of the tree. So why? Because he recognized that, you know, he could have succumbed. It. He could have. So uh, even if he's uh, considered as a hero, he was not sure that he was a hero, at least in this thing. So this is why he, he had to tie himself. So now I am listening to it. I beg to succumb, I know, but since I am tied, no, I cannot succumb. So the control, it's not coming from inside, but from outside. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Channeled and uh, and under constraint. Planned and under constraint. Constraint is there. Yeah. Because if you tell yourself, you know, you cannot fight. You cannot use your arm because you are, uh, you know. <laughs> exactly. So this is, I think, uh, uh, scared of losing. Yeah. You're scared. I mean, he was not trusting himself, you know. So he asked, you know, his companion, you have to put this, uh, what do you call this, plastier, the plastier. It's not cotton. It's something here, you know, if you put it here, so everything will become impermeable. Nothing will get in. You know, it's uh, cotton with some uh, plastic. Some resin? Like that, yeah. Some, uh, you, you, you know, if some liquid. Natural, it is like raisin. You, know, you mix, mix it with something, and then you put it here. So now, nothing, you know, any sound, you know, cannot get in. There. So he asked his companion because he was sure. I mean, I, I think he was uh, he was right because uh, he was sure that you know his that uh, his companions will succumb because he he knew he, he knew them very well. In, in other cases in Ireland, they did some very very bad things. His company, you remember? You know? Very, very bad things. And he could not, and sometimes, sometimes, I don't know, because he was complacent maybe, he could he could see his company killing other people for nothing. You know? But he said, no, he didn't, uh, he didn't uh, get to uh, Maybe he was shocked, I don't know, but he did nothing, you know? To prevent them being from uh, doing this kind of thing. So since, since he, uh, he, he knows them, so he asked them to do this, you know, to carry the <laughs> But at the same time, you know, he tied himself so that he can, he can experience the power of this uh, singing. And as you know, the, the song, this, uh, the song of, uh, yeah, it's now, it's like, uh, no, it's extension, yeah? It's like the, the flute of Krishna, the flute of Krishna. When Krishna is playing the flute, everyone will be completely succumb. Yeah. So, you know, you cannot uh, resist it. So powerful. Because it touches not the, not the ears, but the, the, the heart. The heart. That's, uh, today it's an expression in French, le son des sirènes. Don't listen to the, the, to the sirène song. Because if you listen to them, you are at a risk, big risk, because you cannot resist to that kind of song. 
that kind of thing. Le sang des sirènes. So, and then uh, doubt. So, I, like, I don't know if it's weakness or uh, I don't know. Uh, today, for instance, in the West, doubting is, is a strength. But, you know, the scientific approach, doubting is a strength. If you don't doubt, you are not a scientific. Scientific mind. You should all the time doubt. Why you should doubt? Because you are not sure that you have the truth. Asatu ma sadgamaya. Yeah, because maybe I have some knowledge, but very, very weak knowledge. I know nothing. So doubt is extreme. If you want to increase your knowledge and reduce your ignorance, you have to doubt. And work to reduce the doubt by reducing ignorance. You access your ignorance. Access your ignorance. Very important, yeah? Accessing your ignorance means understanding that there are many things we ignore. But you have to do it yourself. Accessing. Being aware and accessing. Accessing means, yeah, I am digging a little bit in my side, in different areas, or in, in uh, my relation with God, even my relation with God, you know. My relation with God. I have to access my ignorance. And this is why Eunice, Eunice was still doubting. But he didn't, uh, he didn't become... Uh, uh, ati, ati, what do you say? Ati, ateist. Ateist. He didn't become atheist. I don't think so. I didn't, I, no, I didn't think that he became atheist. So, uh, but this doubt, you know, helped him improve, you know, what he, he was doing and uh, also increasing his knowledge of gods. Why God is doing this? Oh, you want to know? Okay, you can know. So the Indian, they know this through the guru and the discipline. Discipline, you know? Dialogue. Yeah. The, in Upanishad, this is how the, the most of the Upanishad texts, you know, was written, bint, etc. etc. Through this dialogue between the guru and the discipline. Yeah? So this is it. So the same thing here can you can if you discuss with something without you know, maybe without becoming, you know religious, something like that. No. So this is a very complex topic, but still today, many people, very, um, there is one uh, very interesting thinking. So what is the relationship between being religious and having faith? What is the, the, what is the relation, what are differences, similarities between religion and faith? Many people might be religious, but they don't have faith. And also, uh, in different areas, we talk about, you know, what is the relationship between the, 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 the content of something and the meaning, and the meaning which is behind, which is behind, which is there. No? That's, uh, that's very important. And this uh, faith is very important, you know, because do I need to be to become religious to have faith? I, I, no, Eunice might have faith, but he, he's not religious. I mean, religious means he doesn't follow, but he has faith. And this is why when he goes somewhere, dangerous, especially dangerous, no, he prays. He used to pray. Why? Because I have to pray because I don't know what will happen. So even the oracle told me. Be careful, there are plenty of things will happen to you, very bad. But he doesn't know what kind of thing he will be facing. Only God can, you know, can, can know. He doesn't know. So this is why he has to, he prays. Because he is not sure about himself, and he is doubting, and because he is aware of his ignorance. This is ignorance. So you cannot predict. So if you know that in this island there are some cyclops there, very dangerous, they will eat your company, you will not go. You will not go. That's true. 
So this, uh, I think, uh, and and also I was cheating <laughs> with this with the cheater. If you are tired, you can just tell me. Yeah? So, myth of wandering. Ulysses, adventurous. No, he was wondering. Maybe he was not expecting that, but he was put in that kind of condition. No. And the epic of absence. You know the absence. So to link it to what today happening. You know, the epic of absence. You know, something is lacking. Yeah. Well, this is why. Yeah. Yeah. So you can link it to diaspora from today, diaspora. You know diaspora? So link it to diaspora. So many people from India, China, from different countries, different countries, they are going to the America, from Europe, etc., spending some time there. For instance, some people, they said, you know, I will go there for five years or something like that, and then go back. And then they spend 10 years, 20 years, then they become American, they become European, you know. So, some absence is there, means uh, uh, I don't know, uh, they have lost something, you know. Even if they have become powerful, very rich, you can be uh, westernized, westernized. But still, something is missing. Absence, this is absence. Absence means something is missing. Absence. Who is absent? So, uh, the roots are absent, the values are absent. Uh, even the food is absolutely food. You know, I, I'm used to Indian food now. Then I, I have to go to McDonald's to drink Coca Cola instead of drinking some Ayurvedic drink or something like that. <laughs> so that's uh, this what's happening. So the absence is very really, so. And the, you lose a lot of things when you are in diaspora, you know. But you are not, you are not always aware of that. That's it. The identity is. Uh, under question. It's under question. That's true. Yeah. So as you said, uh, uh, who I am, uh, Ulysses? I am no, no one. Person, person. You know, in French is, but it's Latin from Latin. Person, and persona. Persona means mask. Mask. There is one you can uh, you can look at uh, movies by uh, uh, Otto Preminger. Otto Preminger. Otto Preminger. P R A. Uh, he uh, uh, beautiful movie. I think it was Persona, it was the title, I think it's Preminger, P-R-E-M-I-M. Maybe, yeah, maybe. So, because the meaning, you know, the meaning of Persona is, what does it mean? It means mask, no, in Latin. Persona, Persona, the word Persona, means mask. Mask, which is true, yeah. 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 And uh, we all of us have some mask, you know, in different situations. We put a mask. So not surprising that you is also when he said, you know, I am person, I am nothing, I am no one. So he was also putting a mask. He was hiding, you know. What what is the what is the purpose of a mask? Mask. You put a mask to hide your real face. You you hide your real face. You put a mask to to hide it. And this is the meaning of person. And in this uh, movie, uh, Otto Preminger, uh, he wrote many books uh, about the uh, interpersonal relations, interpersonal relations, even in the couples, you know, family, family. Or you can say, for instance, uh, Saint Duminage. How do you translate Saint Duminage? It's the title of uh, one of the movie. Saint Duminage. Saint Duminage. Uh, uh, let me explain. Saint Duminage. When in the in the family, the couple, husband, you know, they all the time come in conflict. All the time conflict. We call this. I mean, it might become very dangerous to go to the divorce. It might. 
But, but before that, you know, we, we have this sentiment. Every day we have, oh, what are you doing here? Oh, okay, well, why are you <laughs> sentiment us? <laughs> yeah? yeah? Scene of a uh, host, uh, host, uh, host. Which is natural, yeah? Which is natural. Everywhere in the world, we have the sentiment us. Sentiment us. Between, uh, between, uh, Women, uh, wife, and uh, husband. All the time we have whatever the whatever the culture, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, the, obviously, obviously. <laughs> yes. So what we said, you know, about the wisdom, the Yiddish wisdom, and get how this, how to get, you know, because this is why he tied himself, get out of the center in life. Modi, now that Modi is the word used, you know, is the he was using this word, you know, moli, you know, because it's a substance, it's a portion of a mandate used to, uh, as an antidote against the tipsy poison, you know, uh, she prepared for. And uh, this moli will help him, you know, get some wisdom. So is it, I mean, is it, uh, is it uh, uh, external wisdom or internal wisdom? I don't know. So sometimes we become wise because of the experiences we have. So, but some people, like for instance the Rishi in India, yeah, or the Buddhism, some uh, much uh, authentic Buddhists, you know, they have the wisdom embedded in their text. So they they don't expect any kind of experience to help them become wise because they are already wise. Is it a gift? Is it uh, I don't know? Do you, can you learn uh, how to become uh, wise? Uh, but I think that these people, they got this from their own kind of practicing their religion and the nature of uh, links with their religion. So they move from a religion to faith. So then they got the, the profound, the authentic wisdom. So they, they are not just, uh, just facing, uh, you know, because you know what? When, when you are facing many situations and you fail, you get some wisdom, some learning, because you are failing and then you are don't understand. For instance, you know, best friend of you, you know, best friend, you know, he betrayed you. And then you will understand, you, you, are, you are not able to understand why he's behaving like this. He's my best friend. So then it helps you learn something for what happened to you. It can help you learn and also get some wisdom. So uh, this is, I think, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I have used some, uh, yeah, some, uh, some, uh, yeah. So uh, do you think that we have uh, more time or, uh, no, this is, I think, uh, very easy for you to have understood. Okay. So I go through uh, this uh, quickly. Let me go quickly uh, to just to make sure that no, you are with me. Can you? Are you still with me or not? So this, I think, uh, we discussed this yesterday also. Le chant des sirènes. You understand? This is, uh, I think, uh, this is very powerful. You know, I think uh, this is one of the example for me uh, that you can learn from uh, from you this, from you this. You know, so. Very, very powerful, very powerful. Now, as we discussed yesterday, no one can expect, and I was not expecting, I don't know what about you, but I cannot expect that someone like Yudis cry, could cry. Yes, no. Today, if you cry, it means you are weak, you know? And he's not, I mean, even if you have uh, some uh, doubts, some problems, etc., you should not cry, as, especially as a hero, no? And you should put a mask. Then you should uh, all the time show that you are strong to face any kind of situation. But uh, this is not the human side. Human side, uh, sometimes he feels that, you know, he is helpless and he, uh, you know, okay, he's not, he's not God, he's that human. Then what he, what he does, he cries. Yeah? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is also, I think, uh, Let me I conclude by this. 
two days, not three days. No, because tomorrow I'd like to focus on my convergence because I have not started. Convergence of civilization. Yeah? Tomorrow. Okay? Uh, so this, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we are moving from the Greek to the Roman. You know, we can also go beyond that and go to the uh, the Middle Age, Middle Age, Moyenas, and then go to the Renaissance, and get, go to the what's happening today, the modern, the Western model. So you can see the Greek myth. What happened to this beautiful myths and the beautiful stories of the Greek? They lost the substance. So as we said, you know, for instance, if you go, if you go, uh, because you want to win, you go to war, you know, and fight other people, you know? And your, obviously, your objective is to win, okay? That's the objective. Okay, you win, and you, everyone knows that you are a winner, you know? So even at the personal, personal level, this guy, you give him any kind of assignment, he will win. <laughs> so, a winner, I am a winner, you know, the winner. How to become a winner? Yeah, you have to become a winner. But you know, if you are winning, that's good to, to be a winner. Yeah, I'm not saying that, you know. But you might also uh, lose some very important things, your soul. You are winning the battles. This, uh, many people today, they are, you know, my friend, Jewish people, they are saying that about what's happening in Israel. Israel, all the battles against the Arabs, so Israel wins all the time, all the time. But some people, you know, Jews, Jews, yeah, they are saying that you know we are all the time winners. We are the winner. No one can defeat us. But we are losing our soul. Question mark. I'm not saying that you have to be defeated. You have to lose. No, no, no. But you have to question what you are doing. Because, you know, this is the identity. Who are you? Who are you? You are much more important than just a winner. Through using weapons, this huge, uh, you know, nuclear thing, something like that. You are more than that. You are much more important than that. If you dig, you know, and then you go to, the, to your roots, if you go to your roots, you will find that you, you are human. You are not, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, warrior, <laughs> all right. You are also so this. So, but unfortunately, this is what happened. We entered the amnesia. You know what is the amnesia? Yeah. The amnesia. So this is why one uh, I gave you the thing uh, uh, last time. This Paul, uh, Roger Paul Droit. Roger Paul Droit. The name of Paul Droit. He wrote a book. Uh, you can translate. L'oubli, l'oubli de l'Inde. L'oubli de l'Inde. L'oubli de l'Inde. L'oubli de l'Inde. De l'Inde. L'oubli. Amnesia. No, amnesia. Amnesia when you have forgotten everything. You know? Like, you know, you live also, it happens there. Huh? You know? Roger Paul Droit. I written that book. Very interesting book. Yeah, Roger Paul Droit. Yeah, I can type it. Roger Paul Droit, he wrote this book uh, in, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, uh, to confirm what uh, uh, this uh, uh, Michaud, I read them both. How to go back to my thing? Huh? Escape. What is escape? Oh, here. Yeah. I can write now? Double click it? Like this? Roger, Paul, Droit. I mean, I'm adding also, and Henri Michaud. Henri Michaud. Henri Michaud, I wrote a book, this. 
un barbare, un barbare en Asie. En Asie. Roger Paul Droit, a écrit une book titled L'oubli de l'Inde. The, for, the forgetness, I can say this, the forgetness of India. Or India forgotten. But you know, say, but if you say, if you use this, l'oubli, l'oubli, l'oubli means uh, I'm forgetting you. You know, l'oubli, uh, je t'ai oublié, je t'ai oublié, oubli, oubli means forgetness. Yeah? Ah. ah, it's a lot of, a lot of, exactly, a lot of men, yes. It's a French. Oubli. Yeah, oubli. The Latin is amnesia. Amnesia. But amnesia is uh, stronger. Amnesia. But in this uh, book, you know, he uh, explained how, I mean, uh, because, you know, during that, we discussed it. In theology, in Indian, French is very powerful, you know, used to be very powerful. Completely erased from the story in, uh, in France. And, you know, he said, you know, why a uh, few, few years back, 10, 20 years or 50 years back, 50 years back, we knew much more about India than today. <laughs> what happened? L'oubli. Some, some time back, we knew much more than today. We knew uh, India much better. You know, because in, uh, we have many writers, scholars, they have written a lot of things, interesting things, and we have learned a lot of things. Many, many people, they have written books and different, uh, when they have traveled to India, they have written, you know, many of them, like, uh, uh, what is uh, her name, David Neil, Neil, Neil also, she, she wrote uh, two, three books because uh, she was traveling all the time in India, etc., and then published in Paris. Ah. Exactly. So what happened? What happened? The essential for instance, you know, you have forgotten completely your uh, grandfather, grand, uh, grand, uh, grand, grand, grandparents. Yeah, completely. So grandparents, then the parents. Okay. So parents, you know a little bit, and then you forgot everything. You know, what happened to forget everything? Dubli de Land. He wrote this book, very beautiful book about uh, that. And then he said, this is uh, not normal because, you know, normally we should improve our knowledge. <laughs> we don't understand how you can start learning. You learn a lot of things and then you lose all the, what you have learned. So some, some, this is the, you know, what you call the amnesia. Amnesia is, not, but amnesia, it, it can become a disease, you know, when you are forgetting everything means, you know, you become amnesic. Amnesic means, uh, you remember nothing. <laughs> you remember nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, very, very powerful. And Henri Masso, he wrote this book, uh, I told you, and Barbar on Aziz, and Barbar on Aziz. Because he used to say that, you know, who is a barbarian? Yeah, we'll see, Asian, Asian people, you know. They, these are the barbarian people, you know. Civilization is the West, you know. And then he traveled in different places, and he found, we have also one, <coughs> You can uh, remember, no, this I have forgotten, but no, I have not forgotten. But uh, uh, from Chile, uh, Miruda, pa Pablo, Pablo Miruda. Pablo Miruda, Pablo Miruda. Pablo Miruda, he was ambassador in uh, Sri Lanka or different places like that. And Barma also, he was there, etc. And uh, he said, no, barbarian is in the West, in the Latin America, because they are westernized completely. But these people are civilized, more civilized than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pablo Neruda is a huge person. So uh, we can uh, maybe, uh, sorry, because maybe you are tired a little bit. Huh? Are you tired? No? So we can continue? Really? You are resisting? You are resisting the temptation? You are better than Ulysses? <laughs> That's good. So we will meet uh, again tomorrow? Yeah. We will meet again. Yeah. So please. Uh,
So what we can uh, we can do for you tomorrow? Please do know. Can you can you go a little bit? Uh, know what you have written, what you have understood, what you have listened to, etc. Put this uh, in uh, in uh, one page or thing like that. Yeah. Can you do that? This evening, when you just know, think, no? Remembering, remembering, improve your memory, improve your memory. So, what, uh, what did this guy, I don't, uh, I didn't understand, you know? What did he say about this? Then start to write, you know? Things you have understood, things you have not understood, things you want to better understand through some questions, something like that. Then we can have a discussion, yeah? So we can do this in half an hour or uh, yeah, 45 minutes just to summarize, to synthesize. And then we can move to the other topic. You can do that for tomorrow? Yeah. We have not forgotten the system, how the system is influencing. But the, definitely tomorrow we will focus on that. So how the, so the, about the transformation and change, you know? So there are different ways of uh, transforming, changing. So tomorrow we'll be focusing on that. To what extent uh, the institution, when you are institutionalizing, you know, using some uh, institutional, you know, levels, you know, you can uh, improve the transformation. So transformation can go, yes, can go to Arta Shastra. He was focusing on that, focusing on that. The institutional level, but up to the leadership, because he was talking about uh, leadership, he, he, got, he gave a name of leadership, um, what was the name? Uh, uh, a wise leader. What do you say? A rich leader? No. Uh, richy, richy leader, leadership. Yeah, in, in, in the context of Atta Shastra, he was talking about the leader, how the leader can become much more effective. So he has to integrate the wisdom. And he was uh, uh, Raj, Raj Rishi, Rishi, Raj, Raj Rishi, something like that. Yeah, I was thinking. He used to. Yeah, exactly, that's why. So you have to include the wisdom in your own leadership style. Because, you know, we use leadership style to change, you know. But no, different styles are there. They are democratic, you know, participate, different things. He said, no, no, it's not enough, you have to include. This is the institutional level. But, uh, as we did last time, we said that the internal coral, no, institutional is not there, personal. If you are not able to change the personal, you know, I mean, level of people, so no transformation, no change can happen. So the transformation can happen only through the awareness of people. If you are able to make them aware and work with them, then themselves they will be involved in the transformation process. It will become very easy for you as a manager or the leader to make the transformation happen. So that's uh, that's uh, the idea of uh, Okay, so we'll discuss it. So, uh, merci beaucoup. A demain. A demain. A demain. Demain, c'est tomorrow. See you tomorrow.